Alright, so there's still plenty of people out there who think VO2 max can't be changed, it's a fixed number, uh, and it's only really something that elite athletes should worry about. And yes, the elites need to be really conscious of what their VO2 max is, but that first statement is completely false. I've talked about that time and time again, and I'll continue to yell it from the rooftops, but VO2 max can change and it can improve. It can also detrain and go the other way too. So what can we learn from elite endurance athletes in terms of the rest of us? Okay, we don't need to have the really high 80, 85, 90 number that say a Tour de France cyclist might have, but is it really important and how important is it to elevate and want to improve and train your VO2 max as just the everyday person? How is it gonna make us healthier, happier, and ultimately actually live longer? We're gonna discuss a few stats, a few important research studies that are being talked about a little bit more at the moment to show you why and prove why unequivocally VO2 max is probably one of the most important things you need to worry about for your just general health and well-being. So without any further ado, let's jump into it. All right, so obviously we know VO2 max from an elite athlete perspective is really, really important. And that's what I primarily talk about on this channel from a sports scientist perspective is elite athlete performance is something that we can take a lot of information and insight from. But how do we translate and why is it actually then relevant to the everyday person? And so from a VO2 max perspective, if we're looking at uh, what it actually is, fundamentally, and we go back to the basics when we start these conversations, it's the maximum amount of oxygen we can take in, transport, and utilize. So it's this relationship between our respiratory, our lungs, our breathing, our cardiovascular system, or the ability to transport blood and ultimately oxygen around our body to then get it to the working muscles and be able to use it, but also other active tissues, get oxygen to the brain, etc. The utilization part largely being in the muscle, but, but all across the system. It's these systems working together and our three major body systems. Yes, we have other systems like our endocrine system, our nervous system, etc. These are all integrated in this process as well, and they have their own functions, but primarily when we assess VO2 max, we're looking at respiratory responses, cardiovascular responses, and ultimately muscular responses to exercise, in particular physical activity, to then assess where someone is at overall. So by that definition, it's really, really important that if they're functioning really well, we're gonna have a high number, but if they're functioning really well, we're also gonna be living a lot healthier uh, and ultimately for a lot longer. And the data and the numbers back that up from a research perspective. So if we have a look at some important bits of literature that have come out over the last little while, there's a couple of really key things. So first and foremost, a great study by Strasser, and apologies if I get the names wrong in this, uh, Bircher, uh, 2018, Survival of the Fittest, VO2 Max, a key predictor of longevity is the name of the study. Basically, they came to the conclusion that VO2 Max is realistically the strongest independent predictor of future life expectancy. Um, it's drastically, the, the number itself in terms of increasing VO2, and again, we don't have to get to an elite level, and I'll touch on specific numbers and categories and, and general population rankings in a bit, but having an elevated VO2 max is going to increase our chances of reaching a later natural lifespan. And even if we don't necessarily reach a longer lifespan, we might not necessarily live further years because there's other things that might pop up and complications, I understand that. But a greater aerobic capacity has also been shown to aid in maintaining a greater reserve above what we call the frailty threshold. So you can think about that as the borderline between independence and dependence. Um, from a physiological perspective, how reliant are we on other things to help us keep living and other people and, and other processes to help us keep living? Um, we can get through those on our own, which gives you greater independence, particularly into your older age. And if you're sitting here, probably someone my age, little bit older and going, that's gonna be a long, long way away. Setting the foundations now is really critical because we know that uh, lifelong trained endurance athletes are gonna be well above the typical person when it comes to some of these numbers. So it's really, really important that we understand that from an early perspective, even if you are a little bit later on uh, in terms of age, uh, a little bit older, and you're just going, oh, I'm panicking now because have I left it a little too late? I've got some good news for you. An improvement of about one mil per kilo per minute over a decade, basically, of testing in this other study, and I'll put the reference up for as well. Uh, 2016, middle-aged men, one mil per kilo per minute increase in VO2 was associated with a 9% relative risk reduction in all-cause mortality. So a small improvement in later life is still gonna lead to a massive change in the long run. And that's where we need to really come back to that point on 
yes, we can improve VO2 max, and yes, it's gonna have a significant difference, even if we only make these small incremental gains or only make a single small incremental gain, um, one mil per kilo per minute is actually really quite a small change in the grand scheme of things uh, and can come about through some really simple in interventions from a training perspective or even just some changes in a physical activity profile across the week that are actually going to make a really big improvement and impact on your life overall. Okay, so let's get some numbers in terms of what is good, what is bad, um, where do we need to roughly be from a general health and well-being perspective and what might be aspirational. So I'm going to put up on the screen uh, the male and female normative data sets across all ages. Feel free to pause this. This is from a, uh, a 2018 study um, looking at over 120,000 people across a population. That is a massive study size. So we very rarely see that in exercise physiology settings that we get huge population samples. And in each of these categories, there's approximately 30,000 uh, participants in each of this low, below average, above average, high. The elite category obviously being that very, very small top end percentile uh, had a much lower population number. But we're ultimately looking at an average age of about 53 plus or minus 12, 12 and a half years. So um, a really broad cross-sectional area of the population, which is a, a fantastic way to look at what are some population averages. Um, and we can see here, typically from a female side of things, if you're in that sort of mid 30 um, sort of range for the younger categories, low 30s for the older categories, you're on the average. Um, and I always sort of recommend we wanna try and increase from below to above average at an absolute minimum. That's taking us into that top half and definitely gonna drastically improve uh, your overall abilities, quality of life, aerobic capacity, etc. From the male side of things, it's just that little bit higher because part of this is males typically larger ventilations, bigger lung size, more muscle mass. They're gonna be using a little bit more oxygen genetically in a typical circumstance, not always, but a typical circumstance. So we look at things like getting closer to 40 as a VO2 max is definitely gonna put you closer in that above average across most age bandings. The older you get, obviously, the, the lower that number is as a benchmark, but for most people who are probably watching these videos, in the 40s from a male perspective is great. Now, something that's a really important thing with these categories is even if you happen to be in the low side of things, all right, you go out, you do a little bit of activity, you look at your Garmin and it pops up and it says, we're down in one of these low rankings. As I said before, one mil per kilo per minute can make a big difference in terms of that relative risk. 9% reduction in the relative risk of all cause mortality. So we're already improving our quality of life there. But moving from the low to below average, we invest the time, we invest the consistency, and we go and we actively try and improve our VO2 max, which definitely something that is very achievable for a lot of people with not too much. We don't have to go for, out for hours and on end. We just need to be targeted and specific about the type of training we're doing. We move from the low to the below average. We're not talking hitting the average yet. We're still below, but going from low to the below average category, um, this same study found that about a 50% reduction 50% reduction in mortality over a decade period when we go from low to below average. That's an insane improvement. And we're still at kind of minimums, really. We're not achieving well above and we're not this crazy, unbelievable endurance athlete, um, even in the amateur ranks. We don't necessarily have to be there to have a significant overall life impact. And, and I think some of those statistics are really quite astounding. And this is why it sort of picked up a bit of momentum from a social media perspective, from just a general overall health and wellbeing perspective, and people talking about VO2 max more. I've known about this for a long time. People in our industry, in the sports science, sport performance world, endurance performance world, we've known about this for a long time and the effects it has on performance, obviously, and the filtering effect on these endurance athletes do generally have better outcomes once they retire and finish their careers because they've just built this unbelievable system in terms of their body that is gonna actually allow them to get through life a lot better. So we know this and we're familiar with this and we probably take it for granted. We probably don't share that too much with how does that translate? And we're commonly sort of focused on what these amazing people do. But when we translate it back to the everyday person, this is making a significant difference. And, and if you look at sort of the broader, broader picture here, like when we filter this out, if more people are living better, healthier, um, have better aerobic capacity, have better VO2 maxes, it, it has a flow-on effect to the rest of society in terms of strain on healthcare systems. Uh, there's so many different avenues you can sort of take this. And I guess that's going well beyond sort of my knowledge base in terms of the political side of things and the social side of things. Breaking down data, regardless of who that is, where you sit on that spectrum, the end goal is to try and improve these qualities. Because I know, yes, performance is a component of what a lot of people come and see me for in the lab. But at the end of the day, this is all improving their overall life and well-being in general. So really interesting ones that 
we do need to really consider how is VO2 max really important for us and ultimately how are we going to go about improving it. But keep in mind, we need to be realistic with this um, from a numbers perspective. Try not to get caught up in just trying to chase the highest number or trying to replicate what an elite or professional athlete is. Look at some of these typical population numbers. I mean, getting into the 40s and 50s for most people, male and female, is a fantastic score. We can, we can skew our perspective of what a really high number is based on those elite numbers, um, but we don't actually have to get there. You get to the 40s and 50s, you're already in that high and typically elite for most categories. Um, that is gonna do more than enough. And there is a bit of a diminishing return, like the higher we get, the less and lesser of a, an added bonus we have compared to going, like, going from high to elite isn't gonna have as much of an impact on um, general longevity and things like that than going from low to below average. That will have the biggest effect. Um, but trying to continue to push it up is only gonna have a smaller and smaller increase and continuing little stacking increase effect uh, to give you a further little benefit. Hopefully this has given you a little bit of an insight, slightly different uh, change of pace, but I wanted to address this because I've had a lot of conversations with some clients recently, but also I've seen a bucket load on social media pop up of people talking about VO2 max and, and wow, this is this amazing new link we found with overall health and wellbeing. None of this stuff is new. Some of the studies I've quoted in this video, um, yes are new, 2016, 2018 and beyond. Um, so it's great that this has been backed up in recent evidence, but a lot of this stuff we've known for decades and a long, long period of time. So it, it's important to understand that as much as it's coming about, we've known this for a while, but we still need to continue work to thread the good word around why VO2 max is really, really critical for, for everyone, not just the elite and, and professional end of the spectrum. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Have you considered some of these things or have you just been looking at VO2 max as purely a performance metric? Really interested to hear your thoughts in the comments. As always, if you've got any questions or anything, send them through. Feel free to get in touch with me. Head over to my Instagram at NJ underscore sports science. I actually just started up uh, threads as well. So I'm posting some just thoughts uh, on there. Bit of an interesting new platform. So interested to use that a little bit more next little while. So hopefully you got plenty out of this one. I'm gonna leave it there for today, but we might continue this discussion a little bit further on the socials as well uh, and up here on the channel talking about how some of these concepts and um, ideas and findings from the elite endurance world actually do translate to the everyday person and, and why that is also relevant as well. Because I know some of you are definitely pretty keen athletes, but some of you watching are probably looking up what is VO2 max because I saw it in my watch or my phone data and things like that and trying to get an understanding. And all that comes up is sport performance and elite athlete. Like these things are still relevant. Physiology is relevant to every person. It's just to what level and scale. So we're gonna leave it there and we'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.